While Gamera vs. Virus was originally expected to be the final Gamera film, it ended up being another hit for Dai Studio, proving that their fast and cheap model of producing the films was financially viable. And so director Noriaki Yuasa, along with screenwriter Nissan Takahashi, who had written all the previous entries in the franchise, were given the task of making another Gamera movie. Thus, the resulting film, Gamera vs. Giron, is essentially a carbon copy of its immediate predecessor, though thankfully fares slightly better. While stargazing through their telescope, Akio and his friend Tom, along with his little sister Tomoko, spot a spaceship landing in a nearby field. The three go to investigate, and while doing so, the ship takes off with Akio and Tom on board. Eventually, they land on an unknown planet, where they meet two alien women. The two aliens seem peaceful at first, but soon it is revealed that they want to consume the boys' brains and absorb their knowledge. Luckily for them, Gamera arrives in time to save them, but not before facing off against the alien's knife-headed guardian monster. Monster Kieran. Gamera vs. Giron is beat for beat almost the same movie as Gamera vs. Viras, which does not bode well at first. Like the previous film, it focuses on two young, scientifically obsessed boys who get themselves captured by dastardly aliens who don't have their best interests at heart. Much of the runtime is spent on them exploring empty spaceships and outsmarting all the adults who somehow have a hard time believing them despite all the absurd things that happen in these movies. This is to say that the film is clearly following the formula established by the last film though here it works slightly better thanks to a more imaginative setup, better pacing, and a decent amount of ridiculously cheesy kaiju action. However, these are only mild improvements. Gamera vs. Giron suffers from all the same problems as Gamera vs. Virus did, just to a lesser degree. There is still some reliance on stock footage to pad the runtime, though thankfully it is mercifully short, and just as before, the plot is as simple as it is lacking in any sense of logic or reason. The film takes what should be an extremely high-stakes situation and treats it with a lack of causality so extreme it can be maddening to watch, to which you have to stop and remember that the movie was made for small children, which is no excuse, but at least explains all the film's idiosyncrasies. You Where Gamera vs. Giron fares better is the monsters. In contrast to the last film, Gamera is in this film quite a lot, as is Giron, by far the most outlandish creature of the series so far. He's essentially a gigantic walking machete, and is more agile than you'd think, making for quite a dangerous opponent. Adding to the weirdness is his ability to shoot shurikens off the side of his head, which proves to be quite a thorn in Gamera's sides. The fights between these two are easily the best thing about the movie, and contain a few wacky moments that are sure to be burned into your brain. Gauss also makes an appearance as well, this time inexplicably showing up in space, and painted up silver for added effect. He exists to be literal mincemeat for Giron, dispensed with in one of the most hilariously over-the-top violent scenes of the whole franchise. On the human side, there isn't much to say. Once again, children are center stage, and are no less grating than they were before. Akio and Tom, played by Nobuhiro Kashima and Christopher Murphy respectively, come off as wooden and robotic, staring blankly off screen as they spout scientific mumbo jumbo. Yuko Hamada and Edith Hansen make memorable appearances as their mothers, though naturally aren't given much to do other than act worried and skeptical. Ryoko Kasahara and Hiroko Kai play their alien antithesis Florbella and Barbella, and while there was potential here, poor characterization and unclear motivations make them very weak villains. The only thing that really stands out about them is their amusing outfits. <laughs> Kudos, however, must be given to the overall production. Much of the film takes place on another planet, and while the execution is obviously lacking in certain respects, the creativity and craftsmanship in bringing Terra to life on screen is there. Noriaki Yuasa and his team certainly weren't lazy, that much is clear, and even though it's all super low budget, you can appreciate the attempt to expand the scope of the franchise within its limitations.
Gamera vs. Giron is another lackluster entry in the Showa Gamera series, though isn't nearly as deficient as the preceding film. While crippled by the same lack of time or resources, it at least has some ambitions, literally reaching for the stars to tell a more expansive story. It's just a shame that the execution to tell that story is so unsatisfactory across the board. The film's one saving grace is the monsters. Everything having to do with them is silly, goofy, absurd as fun that should give you a chuckle or two. However, even then, your mind mileage may vary, as you have to suffer through a lot to get to it. It's worth a watch if you're curious or looking for a film to riff on with some buddies, but unless your love for the flying turtle knows no bounds, you may want to skip this one. For more reviews and opinions on all things Gamera, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.